Welcome to another video by Ferris Technology. Today we're going to talk about Microsoft Word and how to use fonts in Word. How to choose them, how to adjust them, how to basically do anything that you need to do with them. So I'm going to choose a blank document to begin with this. And the main focus is going to be this small part of the ribbon here that is uh, dealing with fonts. Now fonts come in two varieties. The first variety is a serif font, and a serif font is a font that has little extensions. Like if I were to choose Times New Roman, that would be an example of a font. It notice that on the T, it has the little downward, those little downward pieces on the on the top of the T. Uh, instead of going just straight down and ending at the bottom, it has these little pieces going out to the right and left. Uh, on the N, you'll see the little flip to the left on the top of the N, and on the on the bottom of the end, it, it comes down like the T does, and I's do the same thing. And, and you see just a little extra. If I were to just choose a, a sans serif font, it would be a font like Calibri that is the default font that you see. Now, now I'm gonna make this a little larger so you can see it better. Um, the sans serif font, you can compare the N here with the N over here. Sans serif doesn't have the little extra. So those are the two types of fonts. And, and when you're writing reports or you're writing for particular authors that want you to present your information to, to them, you're going to want to choose a font that is appropriate for what their needs are. Uh, so in general report writing, you'll, you'll either choose a, a clear font serif or sans serif font. Uh, you would not choose something like Comic Sans, for example, to hand in a report to, uh, to a college or a university. You would choose a font that is generally what we would consider kind of mainstream. And Calibri and Times New Roman are the two mainstream um, fonts that exist today. Now, font sizes. I, I chose 36 for a reason. 36 for a common font is a full half inch high. If you wanted a full inch, then you would choose 72 for your font. So if you're, if you're doing a postcard, let's say you're doing a four by six card that you're putting on someplace as a sign and you want one inch high fonts, then you would choose 72. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop this out and I'm gonna open the dialog box. Now I can open the dialog box with this little arrow at the bottom or notice as I float my mouse over, it says you can do it with control D. So control D will open that dialog box just, just fine for fonts. Now notice it's not control F because control F would be your find dialog box. So they had to use some other letter for it. So control D. Now this one allows you to choose the various different fonts here. Now it's saying the font is body font. Well, that's Calibri body in this case, you notice up here on the left. So I can choose a number of fonts here. And it's, it's amazing how many fonts there are. And if you click the down arrow here, you can see an example of what each of those fonts look like that are, you know, outside the dialog box, it gives you a better, easier to see example than in the dialog box. So a lot of times I'll browse through here to choose, choose my font from over here. Now fonts are an interesting thing. Uh, when I first started working in computers, I worked uh, at a place that sold software and fonts were sold by Adobe um, as individual items that you had to purchase uh, in order to run your print shop. And we had, I had a print shop order that, that came through and the man ordered from me $17,000 just in fonts. So it, once upon a time, fonts cost you a lot of money. It was before the time when, when there were what they called true type fonts that came out with Windows 3.1. And then later, not, later in time, it grew to all of these fonts being pretty much in the public domain now. 
you 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 get word and you get this huge list of fonts now and they can cover most of your needs there are a lot of fonts here to meet uh, any uh, print shop need now sometimes of course you might need a specialty font or a business will want a sign done in a particular font that meets their business need you know for their signage and so forth and, and that will always happen and there there are places that will build custom fonts just for those purposes but for general need we pretty much have uh, have the need covered just by getting word out of the box now let's look at this here a little bit now font style we've got italics bold bold italic notice over here we've got effects called underline and colors different font colors the underlining style notice it's not just underline here but it can be underlined just the words the spaces between the words leave them not underlined or you can just have a straight underline or a double underline a thick dotted dashed all kinds of different the underlined color once you choose one here you can choose a separate underlined color uh, even and notice you know when you use spell check and stuff it's always a red wavy underline if you use grammar check it'll be a blue wavy or a purple wavy underline depending on uh, what you've chosen there font color is, is automatic at first and automatic means that it's going to be black so the font color can be chosen from here as well now there's different effects here uh, small caps is kind of interesting if you if you look at small caps notice it changes calibri down here I'll uncheck it here. Calibri is regular capital undercase here. Small caps makes it the capital C is a little bit taller than the rest, but they all look like capitals. But the lowercase ones are a little shorter capitals than the other. If I decide to make it all caps, it's the full size capitals all the way. You ever want to send secret notes to your friends? Well, you could always use hidden font. And then we've got strike through. Great for editing. Like for example, if you're sending a document around for other people to proof and give feedback, those people can do a strike through to say, I wanna get rid of this sentence and maybe replace it with another one and, and underline that. You've got double strike through, superscript and subscript are neat. Superscript is like having a, an exponent on a number. It's, a, um, it's above and in the top, top of the lettering in really small type compared to the regular size and subscript is the same only it's below so in this dialog box you do get the the uh, the preview down here so that you can see what's going to happen as you change the different items now on the advanced tab you have various other items that you can use the scaling of a font uh, like for example this is the character space scaling so at a hundred percent people would you know it just looks normal but if you change it to a smaller number the letters start squishing together a little bit more if you change it to a bigger number they start stretching apart and so the spacing between the lines would be normal here and the position would be normal here so you can choose expanded or condensed here spacing for each of the letters and positioning you can raise or lower them within the the line that you're using and you can tell you know if you're going to raise it you can tell how many how much you want to raise a particular a particular character that so you can make kind of your own superscript or your own subscript kerning is another font related term kerning for example is let me show you real quick if i change this to courier to courier and type and I type my name is Richard now notice the 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 fonts seem very very regular courier is what they call a mono spaced font meaning this M takes up just as much space as this Y and in fact takes just as much space as this R as this I for Richard so all of the letters are pretty much the same very mono spaced okay now, in kerning, what happens is you choosing like Calibri, and I choose to write the same thing. You notice that the I doesn't take near as much space as this I up here does. The space between them is much smaller between the between the uh, characters. The space between the 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 words. Uh, Monospaced fonts tend to take up a lot more space. 
And if you were in a typing class, for example, and you used a regular typewriter, all of those fonts were monospaced fonts because those fonts, of course, had to have the same amount of space all the time. So your lines were 80 characters long. Well, when computers came along, computers had the ability to put the characters closer together or farther apart and make them more readable and, and actually take up a whole lot less space. So what this is called is kerning, when, uh, when the letters are put, put together to take only the space they need rather than just a arbitrary designated space like on the old typewriters. So when we look at this advanced tab here and see kerning for fonts, you can kern them even closer than the normal kerning. Probably not something that you'd use all that often, but at least you understand the term a little bit. Open type features, way more advanced than what uh, most people need at this point. It's something I've never used uh, and on, honestly something I've never researched. Now, I've done documents that have been two, three, four hundred page long, you know, in the respect that I've done my dissertation and other long documents. And I've never come to the point where I've needed or wanted to use these open type features. So they're there. You can easily research those if you find that you need to understand them. Uh, you have text effects here. You can change these effects and notice it's, you know, the gradient fill and so forth. This is filling the space around the text and making kind of like the word art type of text effect here. And uh, you can set a particular font or change changes that you've made as default for this document or for all documents based on the normal template that opens when you first open Word. Okay, so that's our tour today of fonts and what they do for you and how to change them. Uh, hope you've enjoyed this and come back and see us again sometime. Thanks. If you enjoyed the content that you saw today and would like to help me grow the channel, hover your mouse over my picture to the left and click on subscribe. There are also other videos showing on the screen that you might enjoy.